Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. White House Press Secretary and Kansas City native Josh Ernest introduced Kansas City Mayor Sly James as one of the top three mayors in the U.S. James was at the White House to take part in a live news conference. It happened during meetings of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Mayor James told the National Press Corps about Kansas City's efforts to reduce the digital divide, the growing need for infrastructure repairs, and the Project Choice grant the city recently received. They think of what's been going on in Flint, Michigan, the crisis there. The president yesterday seemed to think this is a real cautionary tale about neglecting infrastructure. Infrastructure has been neglected in this country and it needs to change because if it does not change, we're going to be in serious trouble. At some point it's going to become a national security issue if it's not already. So by addressing infrastructure in a positive and concrete way, we accomplish a couple of things. We become stronger, we become more agile, we become more able to support our business and uh, security needs, but we also put people to work. So infrastructure is huge. You can view the complete news conference on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMO CCO. City Council members accepted an award for gold level status in the Mid-America Regional Council's Solar Ready program. The city has installed many solar panels on its facilities and implemented other best management practices. Mark recognizes local governments that have implemented green best management practices. And in other green news, new data shows that the Aviation Maintenance Building has reduced its energy use by more than 60 percent. The facility was recently remodeled, receiving a LEEDS Silver designation. Last year, it was recognized by the U.S. Green Building Council as one of the most energy efficient buildings in the Midwest. Before the building was remodeled, its monthly energy use was about $4.50 per square foot. That energy cost has now dropped to just a buck seventy-eight. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation. This winter we are keeping very busy with activities and fun for all. A trial run with an indoor production last winter proved successful enough that Starlight Theater has come back with a 2016 Starlight Indoors series. There are still two shows running through January. Late Night Catechism is part catechism class, part stand-up routine, and is one of the longest running shows in the United States theater history. Catholics and non-Catholics alike will enjoy this interactive comedy. The One Man Star Wars Trilogy features Canadian actor and writer Charles Ross single-handedly playing all 40 characters, singing the music, flying the ships, and fighting the battles. Starlight Indoors tickets can be purchased at kcstarlight.com by calling 816-363-STAR or at the Starlight box office in Swope Park. Are you looking to do something different this Valentine's Day? Participate in an old European tradition that's made its way to Kansas City by locking your love to the old red bridge in Minor Park. Couples attach a padlock bearing their names to the bridge and proclaim their unbreakable and everlasting love. Visit the old red bridge on Red Bridge Road east of Holmes in South Kansas City on Valentine's Day weekend or anytime to declare your love. You can also visit lock its.com to purchase a custom engraved lock with a portion of proceeds supporting KC Parks. Lakeside Nature Center invites you to have breakfast with the beasts on Saturday, February 13th. During this event, children will meet some of the beasts living in our own backyards and learn what they like to eat for breakfast. Kids can eat with their favorite beasts, all portrayed by volunteers. Food includes fruit, nuts, seeds, granola bars, and even worms, gummy worms, that is. There will also be crafts, tattoos, and face painting. Admission is $5 per child. Parents are free. For more information, call Lakeside Nature Center at 816-513-8960 or visit their website at lakesidenaturecenter.org. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, Visit caseyparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. I'm 
Trina Parker with the Public Works Department. Today I'm going to show you how doing something as simple as recycling your household plastics can save you and the city money. These blue bins are popping up everywhere, all over the city. They are a key component to KC Recycles, the city's curbside recycling program. On your trash day, you must use a blue or black recycling bin from participating Westlake Hardware or Price Chopper stores. The bins are $9 each, and more than one may be used. Run out of bins? No problem. Set your extra recyclables in a cardboard box, paper bags, or plastic tubs next to the bin and we'll still pick them up. The recyclables are sent to a material recovery facility where the products are sorted, put in bins, and shipped off to be reused. The process keeps extra trash out of the landfills, which are filling up fast. I just came down from the top of the landfill and the view is amazing. The smell, not so good. Before KC Recycles, we were generating enough trash to fill up Arrowhead Stadium in less than three years. With KC Recycles, we've been able to extend the life of our landfill. The city encourages recycling. It makes a significant positive impact to the environment, but it also makes the city money. We actually generate revenue on the low end about $40 a ton. Um, whereas if we go to the landfill, we're paying as much as $25 to $30 a ton to dispose of that trash. Not only does the city benefit, citizens can recycle for free, which means you spend less money on trash tags for your extra bags of trash. You know, in the ideal world, we would recycle more so that we waste less. Recyclables are picked up at the curb on the same day as your weekly trash pickup. Before setting the full bins on the curb, please remove food and rinse out containers and you can recycle almost anything. It's estimated that about 76% of what you do put in your trash can be recycled. Here are a few of the items you cannot put out for recycling at the curb. Glass, plastic bags, styrofoam, motor oil bottles, paper towels, tissues and napkins, plates or cups. The entire list of what you can and can't recycle is on our website at kcmo.gov. And just because we won't pick it up at the curb doesn't mean you can't recycle it. We have drop-off centers throughout the city. The list of those drop-off sites is also on kcmo.gov. I'm Katrina Parker with the Public Works Department. Parks Department has been joining with the neighborhoods and trying to reclaim uh, through restoration, removing honeysuckle and other invasive species. And uh, with this particular site here at Indian Mound, uh, we're trying to reclaim the view. We're taking back the view and uh, of the East Bottoms. I happened to be running through here one day because um, I live just down the street. And uh, I came across that bench over there and uh, sat down and stared at trees, uh, the middle part of trees. And I was like, man, I don't know why this bench is here. The view, there is no view. The view is the trees, which isn't a bad view, but um, it could be better. I think probably over barbecue or something, we said, you know, I think, why don't we try and take some of these trees out and, and bring the view back to probably what it once was when they first put the bench there. By doing that, we are removing some of the trees but the uh, majority of what we're removing is honeysuckle and other invasive species. So we cleared it um, first time and you, we had a pretty good view because it was winter time and then naturally brush grew back a little bit and so um, we kind of maintained and pruned a little bit um, over the regular seasons um, to help in the next cleanup and we did that for a couple of years until this last time when um, we, we took a, a nice big chunk out of it so it's a, it's a good view now. This is a great way to bring people back and bring more people to the park for positive activities as kind of an anti-crime um, effort as well. And so uh, naturally the community service part is also anti-crime, brings neighbors together um, and brings them to the park and makes them understand that, that people use this park, it's okay to come to this park. Um, now that there are more opportunities here in this park to, uh, to enjoy, it's kind of a, an all-around collaborative effort from, for the neighborhood. The Super Bowl isn't all about football and bragging rights, it's all about the food. 
Did you know Americans consume more food on Super Bowl Sunday than any other day besides Thanksgiving? We do. Hey, I'm Marty Duncan from MartyKnowsParties.com and Season 8 of Food Network Star. I'm known for affordable ideas for easy entertaining, and I'm making a couple of my game day favorites here. My fiery Diablo chicken wings, an addictive three onion dip, along with my fresh guacamole and salsa. But did you know all of these can cause big problems if you don't prepare and serve them properly? Having been on the receiving end of food poisoning a couple of times, I know how important food safety is when entertaining. So I partner with the USDA, the FDA, the CDC, and the Ad Council to remind you to make food safety a big priority on game day. We have tips on foodsafety.gov to help you throw a winning Super Bowl party because everybody loses when food becomes unsafe. For parties, I always follow the 40-140 rule for food safety. I keep cold foods chilled at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below and hot foods heated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or above. Also remember to clean, separate, cook, and chill. Unclean hands are one of the biggest culprits for spreading germs. So every time you high five, you gotta wash them again before preparing and serving food. And remember to use clean cutting boards and to clean your utensils and your countertops too. Homemade salsa and guacamole contain a lot of fresh ingredients like I've got here. Some of them could be contaminated. So make sure to wash all of your ingredients and your hands. Even those things that you peel like avocados have to be washed before you use them. Now, cross-contamination occurs when raw meats touch ready-to-eat foods like veggies. And for serving, have plenty of individual plates and a serving spoon for each dish. This encourages guests to add a spoonful of guacamole or salsa onto their plate rather than standing at the buffet and grazing out of a shared bowl. Take a time out and use a food thermometer to make sure your meat and poultry are safely cooked. Meat color just isn't a reliable indicator that the meat is fully cooked. Only internal temperature is. We have food temperature guides for you on foodsafety.gov. And the two hour rule is also in effect. Food just should not sit out at room temperature for more than two hours. So remember that and at halftime, be ready with replacements. Promptly chill raw and prepared foods to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below if not consuming them after you cook them. And for serving, display cold foods over bowls of ice or on ice for a stylish and safe party. You can find all my favorite game day recipes and party ideas at MartyKnowsParties.com. And if you have questions about preventing food poisoning and how to keep your friends and family safe this Super Bowl Sunday, check out the free resources on foodsafety.gov. The Ask Karen database has answers to 1,500 questions related to foodborne illness. And the USDA Meat and Poultry Hotline at 1-888-MP-HOTLINE is open from 10 to 4 Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. For the USDA, the FDA, the CDC, and the Ad Council, have an awesome Super Bowl get together and stay food safe. Go, wait, who's playing in the Super Bowl this year? Join us at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, February 17th at the Brush Creek Community Center, 3801 Emanuel Cleaver Boulevard for the annual Community Info Exchange. This is a networking opportunity presented by the Parks Department. Bring business cards and promotional items. Each guest gets two minutes to speak about their business, organization, or an upcoming event. It will help you discover Kansas City's best kept secrets while sharing your own story. For more information or to RSVP, call 816-513-7701 or email carol.green at kcmo.org. Chepta Kozatan Buckner has been named the Executive Director of the American Jazz Museum. Buckner is a well-known and award-winning nonprofit leader after a 25-year career with the Kansas City Public Library. The American Jazz Museum, located in the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District, hosts thousands of students, scholars, musicians, and fans for more than 200 performances and events each year. Currently, the city is considering a proposal to invest millions of dollars in the district to repair infrastructure, add a restaurant to the museum complex, and create new and improved attractions. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.